Oh, shit. Russian woman wakes up to boa constrictor coming out of her toilet. Oh, my God. A Moscow woman recently got a shock of her life as she entered her bathroom and saw a full-grown white boa constrictor snake hanging out of the toilet. I was looking for a cave. <laughs> not that kind of cave. Not that kind of boa. It's not that kind of boa. <laughs> I'm nasty. Well, the boa was in the toilet. The following program is rated TVMA. What you are about to watch contains explicit language, adult themes, violence, and may not be suitable for viewers under 18. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. Welcome back to another episode of What the Nuts, the podcast where I talk about all the things that drive me nuts. I'm your host, the Blue Collar Joe. And this week, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Memorial Day. Uh, I'm going to, I don't know, try and express myself on my gratitude for uh, all the people who have fought and died for our uh, our rights, you know, because if it wasn't for those people, then I wouldn't be here doing this. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to be doing this. I wouldn't be able to be sharing my opinions and, uh, little tidbits of fact and whatnot. But, um, I think, I think it all sums it up when, when folks I know that have served and um, I definitely appreciate what the military did for them. I mean, don't get me wrong. I know there's issues with, you know, the military and, and aftercare after you get out of the military. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about those ones that those ones that made the ultimate sacrifice, those ones that met their maker defending our country, or in most cases on foreign land, they, they made the ultimate sacrifice. I uh I hold the military in in uh in great respect, you know. I uh I don't know, I just have deep love for all the all the ones who have served. I mean, my grandfather served, my uncle served, um, my dad had a medical exemption, they, they, uh, they were going to draft him, and, uh, he couldn't make it through the, through the physical, um, you know, I got, I I work with a bunch of folks that were in the military. But um, I guess with that said, you know, I'm gonna jump on over to that uh, segment I recorded earlier. Um, 
it's kind of, it's a little bit about, well, you know, Memorial Day and, and where it came from and how it was ratified and um, whatnot. And I know a lot of people today are going to be getting together as family and, you know, having barbecues or a lot of folks are out on the lake or, uh, you know, out, they're out just doing whatever, you know. I don't know. I, I I always say, you know, one of the, one of the big things is, you know, if, it, if if you can't shake a service member's hand or give them a hug, you know, uh, at least let them know. Stay in contact with your service members in your in your family. Uh, try to. I know. I know it can be hard sometimes, but let them know that they're loved. Cause it can it can it it can be just as hard for them. So, anyways, on <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> I'm getting a little choked up there, yo. All right, uh, let's jump into the segment I recorded earlier. Welcome back to What the Nuts. I'm your host, Blue Collar Joe, and today we're diving into the history, significance, and traditions of Memorial Day. This holiday, often seen as the unofficial start of summer, holds a much deeper meaning that we often overlook. So let's take a moment and to reflect on why we observe Memorial Day and how it came to be. Memorial Day, originally known as Decoration Day, began after the Civil War to honor the Union and Confederate soldiers who died in the conflict. The origins of Memorial Day are a bit murky, but multiple towns and cities claiming to be the birthplace of the tradition. However, in 1966, the federal government declared Waterloo, New York, the official birthplace of Memorial Day. Why Waterloo? Because it hosted an annual community-wide event during which businesses closed and residents decorated the graves of soldiers with flowers and flags. The practice of decorating graves was not new, though. Many communities in the North and South had similar customs even before the Civil War ended. For example, one of the earliest commemorations was organized by formerly enslaved African Americans in Charleston, South Carolina, in 1865, just a few weeks after the war ended. They held a parade and a ceremony to honor Union soldiers who had died in Confederate prison camps. The official date for Memorial Day was chosen by Major Gen- General John A. Logan, leader of an organization for Northern Civil War veterans. He designated May 30, 1868 as the day for decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country. This date was likely chosen because flowers will be in bloom across the country. After World War I, the holiday evolved to commemorate American military personnel who died in all wars, not just the Civil War. In 1971, Memorial Day was declared a national holiday by an act of Congress, and its observance was moved to the last Monday in May, creating a three-day weekend for many Americans. Here's a poignant quote from President John A. Garfield, delivered at Arlington National Cemetery on the first official Decoration Day in 1868. Quote, We do not know one promise these men made, one pledge they gave, one word they spoke. But we do know they summed up and perfected by one supreme act, the highest virtue of men and citizens. For love of country, they accepted death and thus resolved all doubts and made immortal their patriotism and their virtue. Memorial Day is marked by various traditions. Many people visit cemeteries and memorials to honor and mourn those who died in military service. Volunteers often place American flags on graves of military personnel in national cemeteries. The National Memorial Day concert takes place on the west lawn of the United States Capitol. 
featuring musical performances and tributes to the men and women who served. But Memorial Day is also a time of family gatherings, barbecues, and parades. It's a reminder of the balance between remembrance and the celebration of the freedoms those we honor fought to protect. In recent years, there have been a push to return to the day's original intent, the National Moment of Remembrance Act passed in 2000. It asked Americans to pause for one minute at 3 p.m. local time to remember and honor those who have died in service to the nation. This moment of reflection serves as a powerful reminder of the true meaning of the holiday. As we enjoy this Memorial Day, let's take a moment to reflect on the sacrifices made by our service members, their bravery and dedication have shaped our nation and secured the freedoms we cherish. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the history and significance of Memorial Day. I'm the Blue Collar Joe. This has been What the Nuts. And now on to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> All right, here's the segment I like to call Oh, Weird News. This is my weird news. This is my strange stories. This is uh, shit that I found on the internet. This is what happens when you like wander around the internet and you're just like, oh yeah, this is such a safe place. And then you're like, what the nuts is this shit right here? <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, we're on the, uh, what is this? The UE Express. U Express or whatever, the U Express, I guess. All right. And this story is uh, out of Madison, Wisconsin. Madison, Wisconsin. At the Capitol. And uh, so uh, the groundskeepers, right? They're fucking, they're tasked. Hey, hey, got to go out there and, and weed the fucking tulip garden. You got to weed the tulip garden. Well, what they found in the tulip garden was actual weed. <laughs> Somebody had gone over there. And planted weed in their fucking garden. That's that's crazy. Uh, that's oh oh I see why I see why is because it's still illegal there. Yeah, yeah. That means that you know a roach will get you at five years. Okay, let's see here. Let's see here. There was something else I seen. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so. Wanted criminal pretends to be deaf. <clears throat> deaf and mute for 20 years to avoid prison. This motherfucker. So, one night, he gets into a goddamn argument with his neighbor. What a fucking dumbass. All right, first of all, first of all. All right. I guess in China, they fucking live so close together that, like, you know, you fucking hate your neighbors fucking way worse because they're always talking shit and you can hear it. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I, that's it. I, 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 that's, that's my conjecture. Anyways, uh, so this dude, uh, Chow, right? His name is Chow, right? Uh, this was in 2004. He fucking busted a dude. He busted his neighbor after getting an argument with them. In the head with a fucking shovel. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Right. Okay, so... Um, so, Jow... Then he was like, I'm I'm not going to jail. Uh, you can eat a bowl of dicks. So, he left. I ran away to the mountains. And pretended to be deaf and mute. And he was a scrounger. He was a scrapper. So he was like, he was picking up tin cans and, you know, aluminum and all that shit and turning them into the, to the recycle. <laughs> I mean, they don't have the recycle like us, but, uh, it's fucking funny. He, he like spent 20 years just fucking nodding and gesturing and it's like, are you serious, dude? 
Okay. Uh, let's see here. All right, this comes out of uh, KABC in California. All right, Pasadena, California arrested a man, 63, after an investigation revealed that he had been setting off explosions in his neighborhood. It is believed to be, he is believed to be responsible for over 100 identify, unidentified booms over nearly two years. Most happened in the middle of the night, but while collecting evidence, police heard a loud explosion and saw a white BMW drive through the re resulting cloud of smoke. I think he's trying to be on a fucking action movie. <laughs> he was probably shooting. Hey, he was probably shooting a fucking YouTube video at the time. I don't know. Kind of like Jake Paul. Um. Let's see here. I fucking lost my spot. He's charged with three felonies and his bond was set at 1.5 million. Hey, that's how they fucking do it in California. You could you could do some bullshit, right? And um they're like, "Yeah, so you 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 want you wanted to get out?" No, 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 no. For some fucking crazy fucking crime, they're going to put 1.5 million on this dude. But, hey, you know, you can go into a store and walk right out and they'll fucking give you a goddamn ticket. It fucking doesn't make no sense. California doesn't make no sense to me. So, let's see here. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I think that's it. I think that's it for these, these right here, because, uh, What the? Hey, can we fucking... There we go. Oh, shit. Where is this? Where is this? Okay, fucking check this out. Check this out, you guys. This, <laughs> this is in... Barrel, fucking Indiana, Indiana Avenue and Feral. Feral what? I like how this shit is like, yeah, fucking. This is probably a local paper too. Anyways, I'm not sure where it's at. Hey, uh, so so fucking uh, cops getting a shootout, right? And uh bystander comes up and is like <laughs> he said okay so <laughs> alright so they got in a shootout I don't know if the officer was injured but he went to where the cop was and then started shooting too <laughs> and um uh, Oh, okay. So they, they hollered at him. Hey, man, fucking put the gun down. Put the gun down. Put the gun down. He stopped. He started shooting. And and then um, him and the bystanders fucking shot him. Uh, of course, this is like in the middle, like in the middle of the night. Of course, it happened in the middle of the night. Yeah. And it looks, 
from this picture, it looks to me like it's a a fucking. I can't tell though. It's Lux with two X's, so I'm thinking it's a porno shop. <laughs> they got a shootout outside of a porno shop. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm fucking, I got to do some more research on that, but that, that's what the picture looks like. All right, that that concludes this segment. You guys say, uh, uh, let's see here. What the fuck? What the fuck? Oh. I forgot. We got to do that one final segment. One final segment. You need Jesus. Jesus Christ. That's Jason Bourne. You two motherfuckers need Jesus. Holy Jesus. That's right. You two motherfuckers need Jesus. That's uh, Donald Trump and fucking Joe Biden. They both need Jesus. (laughs) All right. Here we go. Here we go. We're going to fucking read. We're going to read from the book. I'm still looking for that other book. (laughs) Uh... (laughs) Shit, that's funny. Here we go. This takes us back to Twitter, May 6, 2016. All right, May 6, 2016. Uh, Looks like uh, Crooked Hillary has a zero leadership ability. As Bernie Sanders says, she has bad judgment, constantly playing the woman's card. It is sad. Well, it's true. She tried to fucking play on people's emotions. Anyways, that's our show. Uh, Thank you for joining me this week. Uh, we'll see you next Wednesday or what? Well, what? Well, nope. <laughs> we'll see you next week on What the Nuts. I'm your host, the Blue Collar Joe. And we're gone like a fart in the wind. Here I go. I hear that you're looking for me, bitch. Here I go.